there's a lot of confusion about uh, um, opting in and opting out and what does it mean and what do they get? Uh, a, a real quick history, the way it used to be with Flex, if you set somebody up and didn't use a portal, you were just sending them emails, there were no barriers, there were no, there, there were no gates you had to go through, you just sent them and the people would get them unless it went to their junk. When I went to this first tr Flex training a couple of months ago, they said there's this thing even for doing what's, it's, and that's called a subscription, just so you know when you're looking in there. Subscription simply means you're sending them emails and you're updating them with emails. And there is now an opt-in. When I first heard about this, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Because if I have a prospect and I'm sending, hey, I want to I want to get you, I'm going to send you listings that will fit your criteria. And I didn't like the fact that now there was. But after I looked at it, it does kind of it does kind of make sense because the, the there are there are two different emails that, that Flex sends out. And actually I'm going to show you this. All right. So when you do a subscription, meaning you did a search and I'm going to email Joe Blow, my new prospect, a bunch of listings. If the contact, here's what I think happened, and this is why there was so much confusion. When we switched over, all of your contacts came over uh, automatically. Not the searches, but all of your contacts came over. All of those contacts, when you went to set up searches for them, they did not have to go through this gate. They were already assumed to be approved or opted in. They didn't have to go through this gate. So as you did new suspects or prospects or customers, whatever you want to call them, you do a new search and send it out, they will get this email first. And after I saw it and read it, I said, I'm perfectly fine with that because it's it, it basically is a little teaser and it says, you know, you want to get these emails, you got to click here and that's all they have to do is click there. This is for subscriptions. Any, okay, so any questions on that? Auto sends equals subscriptions, correct? Uh, when you say auto send, uh, yes, auto send is subscriptions, which is you're, you're setting up a new search for somebody. And yes, you're, it's automatically updating. This is what they will get first if they were not in your database, your, your list of clients. The next one is the portal. Let me see, how do I move this thing forward? Isn't that interesting? I'll go forward. Oh, it's just slow. Okay. So if you sign someone up on the portal, which we'll, we're, we're gonna talk about this after I get through this little 20 minute thing here. If you sign somebody up on the portal, this is what they're going to get, which is obviously a little bit more, it's a lot deeper. I'll give you a second to read it. Has anybody seen these emails, by the way? No. Good. Well, don't you think it's good to know what, you, what they're getting? Yeah. <laughs> huh. So so obviously for the portal, it's a little bit more intense. Talks about logging in. You've got to log in. You got to download the Flex app. Now a little, just a side note on the Flex app. One of the discussions they were having in there uh, got it kind of spun out of control on, the, on that last training. Based on this, if your client goes and gets the Flex app themselves, it's not the pro, so they can't see all the stuff that you see, but it'll, it will not, it will not be um, identified with you specifically. It will be identified with the listing agent. So if they pull up a listing, they're gonna see all the listing agents information. If you, if you decide to use this portal and you want them to use the app on, the, on their phone, you should send them the link. That way, everything will be branded to you. That's, that's pretty big. Um, is that, any questions on that? No? Okay. So when, wait, so when, you, when you're setting up your, auto, and you're setting up your client in a search and auto send, 
Um, right, time out, time out, time out. I, I got to interrupt you, Bonnie Sue, because you want to be careful with what you're describing. There are two things. You're calling it auto send. That is a subscription. That is not the portal. Right, but I'm saying yeah. when you- this is, this is the portal. Well, I didn't right. know what you were referring to, so- Okay, so when, I'm just saying, when you go to set up a search for someone, a subscription, there is a button that says, do you want to activate your portal? So no, that's, no, there isn't. That's, that, no. Hold on, this is what they get. They get this if you do a subscription. Correct. It says- Yes, please send me listing. Doesn't say anything about a portal. When no, you... she said when she's setting up the search and saving it, she has the option of setting up a portal or not. Correct. Okay. Okay. So, so me personally, I never used the portal in the last database and I have no intention of using right. it again. That's just me. Tammy, save that because that's the next after we're through with the, the basics. Okay, there. I'm jumping ahead, Ted. You are a little bit. I'm, I didn't so, know. I didn't know how you felt about the portal, and I found. I don't like I, it. Yeah, I find it no, very interesting that you said. I don't think that. I. Yeah. Well, hold, hold hold that conversation. We're going to have that conversation. Wait, mm -hmm. I still have a thing. So okay. when if you're and you click on the button, do you want to activate the portal? It's for the it's for the client. Like I'll tell my client, I'll activate that for you, but I'm not going to be checking it and checking in. You just continue to send me your emails or texts that you want to see, whatever. But I think it allows them to keep track of what they like and things like that. I didn't Great question. Use it. I didn't Great. use it before. Great question. And that's that is kind of where we're going with this. But before we go there, I want to make sure everybody's crystal clear on the differences. The the you're very familiar with subscription. It's what you've used since we were with, you know, Connexus and the, and Tammy going way back. I don't know if you remember when, when we first got Connexus, no one even knew that it was tracking what was already sent. It was an automated system that nobody knew how to use. When we figured it out, God, we had a competitive advantage. But yes, but that was a long, long time ago. Right. Uh, so, so what was my point? So everybody's familiar with subscriptions. When you're setting this up and you choose portal, portal allows you to interact with the customer automatically. The, the customer can flag customer, client, prospect, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. They can, they can say favorites. They can, they can say this one, this one's too far from my, from my work. They can put comments in and you will see all of this. You will see everything that they are doing. You're interacting together on the portal. They can they can change the search. They can look at different things. They they act. They're essentially in the MLS using it. That's what the portal is. It's a portal for them to access the MLS, and you will see everything that they're doing. Okay. Now I'm I'm trying to be unbiased with my description, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? That's what the portal is. So if you set someone up on the portal, it's not any more or less work for you. There's nothing you have to quote maintain except you know looking at what they're doing. All you're doing is looking at what they're doing. Does that, does that make sense, Bonnie Sue? I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, I knew all that, but okay. um, I just I I know that there's a button that you can activate the portal, but yes. I don't I don't. I act, I bet started to activate it. I never did for Connexus or for Flex before or whatever, or Paragon, but I'm doing it now. But I'm telling my people, I'm not going in there and interacting with you. It's so you can save your favorites because otherwise they're going to Zillow and saving their favorites or realtor.com. Well, so. I've got a bit of a, I'm going to give you my take on that in, a, in a, mm -hmm. about another minute here. Okay. But what I think we're we're all good with this. We understand the difference between a portal and a subscription. I don't think anybody's using the portal. And I, you know, you're 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 welcome to use the portal. I mean, if you want to, if if you, uh, but this is what they would get if you say if you say uh, I want I'm going to activate the portal. I, I've never done it, but I'm assuming you either have to, you may have to manually click a button that says send an invitation. And this is what they get. They have to. They have to get this. 
before the portal will activate. They have to sign up. They have to put in a login and a password. Okay, it's it's pretty. Uh, I mean, once it's set up, I'm, it, it's it's smooth, and you can communicate and everything else. And like I said, they can click favorites, and you can you can send them a comment. Did you see that? Whatever. It's it's kind of cool. It's high tech and it's innovative. Um, so I'm not going to share the screen anymore because that's all I wanted to show you on that. So let's that's 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 all I have for you. I just wanted you to be aware, and and with Tammy's help, I was able to actually specifically see, uh, and it, it it was very confusing at that meeting. I knew that this was the case, but I wanted to confirm it. So, well, what are they talking about? Opt in. That's when the client would opt in to go get into the portal. Yeah, there's a. Um, no, you no? control. You control that. Oh, okay. You control that. If you if you want them, if you want to offer them the portal, it's up to you to send them the invitation and set it up. Okay. Yeah. And then, well, actually, they set it up. They click that button. They put in their login password and I don't know what else. Yeah. Uh, and then you you start interfacing with them. And and it's not that it's not that complicated to do. It's more work on them than it is on you getting it set up. Yeah. So so here's my spiel. And bear with me here because they're they're disconnected, but they're and you may agree or disagree, but just alternate considerations about the portal. Um, I don't, I, most agents don't think as deeply as I do about some of this stuff. I, I, I'm a little stupid about that. You guys already know that. Over the years, one of the things that's happened with customer service in general is the, the, the more the, we can automate and the more we can make simple and the, the, the more we can make it happen automatically, the better, you know, thus voicemail and then the enhanced voicemail. And now we have bots that, that you go on. You don't even know if you're talking to a bot or a real person until you ask a couple questions. And then you finally realize, oh my God, I'm talking to a machine. You know, this is supposed to be good customer service because we're getting enhancing, enhancing, enhancing. My take has always been what's really happening here? Why is the portal, why do customers like the portal? Here's my take on it. The reason the customers like the portal is they don't have to talk to you. You know, you're not, you may have a great relationship and they love you, but they don't want to be constantly, you're a salesperson. You know, I don't want, do I want, do I want to talk to Ted? Do I want to talk to Joe? You know, it's like, I'll, I'll let you know when I need you. It'll leave me alone. And the more they can be left alone, the better they like it. So they love the portal because they can do all this stuff. And, and the agent likes the portal because, oh, now I don't have to talk to them. It's all automatic. Just send me my commission check. It's exactly the opposite, in my opinion, of what we should be doing. Because everything that you do with, with a subscription, let me simplify this. This is there's, It's deeper than that, and it's hard for me to express it. You know, why has Zillow been so successful? Zillow's been so successful because they went the opposite direction that we as an organization, as realtors did. Our theme was keep the data, keep it secret and feed them out what, you know, keep control of everything and limit what they see. I'm gonna, you want two bedrooms, three bed, you want the pink flamingo. Well, I'm gonna make sure you, I only show you the pink flamingo because I'm in control. Well, guess what? That worked like crap because the data, the, the internet caused the data to be out there. Initially we were okay because the data was crap. Well, today the, the, the data is spot on. These uh, Zestimates are almost perfect. They really are. They, they, you know, yeah, you'll see some glitches, but, but generally they've improved tenfold. Zillow took the exact opposite approach. They went out there and said, we're going to give them all the data. And we're going to give them, and, and, but they had to get the data. How'd they get the data? Here, realtors, it's free. <laughs> and we all, you know, we puked it out. So now, you know, move ahead 10 years or whatever. Now they own the consumer. Every one of your buyers, I guarantee you, when you're saying to them, use our portal, they're going, yeah, okay, whatever. But they're using Zillow. 
They own it. So don't even yeah. think that you're going to spending all of this time and effort and energy on the portal and doing this. Da, da, da. You know what? How about when you get a new listing that comes on and you see that they got it and opened it? How about picking up the phone and saying, hey, I wanted to talk to you about that listing or hey, did you see this listing? Or how about emailing them and say, wow, this one kind of fits. Instead of using the portal to, you know, do this. Where, where's, my, where's my camera? There it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing this, right? Our job is, to, is, is customer services to develop relationship with them and the portal allows us not to talk to them. Okay, spiel over. What do you think? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not an advocate of the portal, but you know, Brad loved it. Um, and, he, and he used it effectively, you know? Um, so it, it does have merit, but for somebody like me with my personality, um, boy, it's a crutch. It's a crutch for me to avoid having to call them and, 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 and do, do that stuff that builds relationships. I, um, I'm kind of in Bonnie Sue's camp where I am not going to pay attention to everything they're doing and whatever their favorite. I don't, I don't give a shit. You want to see a house? Email me or call me or text me and we'll go see a house. Exactly. Other than that, yeah. I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to spew the shit to you and then mm -hmm. you tell me what you want to see. So when I was in that training and she had, I don't know, 30 people, 25 people, and I was listening to them. And I was like, oh my God. Do they micromanage? I was on there, well, but I, I, I logged off. No, it, it, micromanage is kind of where I'm at, but, but the amount of effort and energy they're putting into this, like, like, like their Who has time? sources and informations are so, they're not, they're, you're wasting time. Mm -hmm. All of that time you're spending trying to fine tune this and, and talk about pink flamingos, you know, they're, they're doing this, like, yeah. I know what they, I know what they want. Well, you know what? I've said this for 20 years. It didn't take me long to figure this out. You don't know what they want. Because they, they don't know. They don't know, they don't know what right. they want. Yep. So yep. if they don't know what they want, how the hell are you limiting it and telling them what, what sending yeah. up that pink flamingo and see what they would say about it. In other words, Ted, don't send me anything with, it has to have at least three bedrooms. And here's my response to them. I'd say, okay, three bedrooms or more, I get it. In the price range you're in, let's say they're looking at 300,000. If the price range you're in and the type of property you're looking for, it's gonna be extremely rare that there's a two bedroom house. If there is, I would rather send it to you because it might have a full basement walkout ready to be finished with two bedrooms and a bath that's $100,000 less than what you've been looking at and it'll work beautifully. I would hate to limit that. And they're gonna go, oh, you're pretty smart. I like to think they think that. But they are gonna say, that's part of our job. We're counseling them and we're saying to them, you know, I understand what you're looking for. And if they say to me, Ted, I don't want to see a two-bedroom house. Then I'll go, okay. That, I joke about the pink flamingo. That's an exchange right there to, 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 you know, why am I limiting it? There might be an opportunity there. Take that to anything. Don't send me anything with electric heat. Wait a minute. What if we find two identical houses? This one has electric heat. It's 250000 Everything else is the same. This one's 300,000, it's got a new forced air system in it. Isn't that electric one a better value? And, and put it, put a, you know, spend 20,000 to put, the, you, you get what I'm, you get my point. Accepting the pink flamingo, that's an opportunity, damn it. It's an opportunity to counsel your, and, and they're gonna look at you like, wow, he, 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 she's pretty smart. She's, she's, that's, I didn't think of that. They're going to say that. Oh, geez, I didn't think of that. I want to be in Queensbury, but, you know, I got to have at least five acres. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Granted, if somebody says to you, um, I don't want to see anything that's, that's, that's under, I, I want at least an acre, and you accept that, and you say, okay, and then you send them something with three quarters of an acre, 
Yeah, they're going to say, idiot, I told them that. I told them I only want to see an acre. So address it when you're talking to the prospect. The other thing is that always drove, drove me crazy. Agents, especially new agents, think when they sit down with a, somebody that's going to buy a house, they sit down and ask them what kind of house they're looking for, and they ask them a thousand questions, and you've got a list that's a mile long of all these things. Those are not must-haves. That If they have 30 things or if they have 10 things on their list, the house that they ultimately buy may have five of them, six, eight, two, I don't know. Might, might have six, well, it's not going to have two of them. It's going to have six of them or seven of them of those 10 things. If you start limiting them, the house that they want, they won't see. I never understood why people did that. They set up searches with all this criteria. That, don't do that because they're not going to get all those things. And I club. tell my people that when they're like yeah. talking about all this stuff, I go, listen, if I start restricting this thing, you're not going to get anything and you're going to miss opportunities. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to put the bare minimum. You lost me after the top four. That's all yeah. I care about. Three. After that, a location, two. price point. Yeah. Two. I, yeah. Exactly. And yeah. and so I I don't care. I've had engineer personalities and stuff that they show up with a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. wants and needs, and they're like. Yeah. And I say to them, I, I say to them, that's awesome. <laughs> about the the searches, we forget that the objective of setting up the search is not to find them the perfect house because you're not, you don't know what the perfect house is for them. Your objective is simply setting up a tool to touch them regularly, not too much and not too little. So over, my experience has been if I use price and geography generally, I mean, it's not like I never use other criteria. But, but the core is price and criteria. If I do a search for somebody and they want to be in Queensbury schools and they have a price range or whatever, and they have all this other criteria, if I get 30 listings, for me, it's a perfect search. Because 30 listings means they're going to get something maybe once a week, something new, and I'm going to keep touching. That's your goal, not to find the perfect house. Your, your, your goal is to set up a search. I mean... Somebody that sets up a search that comes up with three results and that's what they use, they're out of their minds. What a waste of time. What are you doing? That prospect or customer or client, call them what you will, they're going to say, yeah, they said they were going to set me up a search and they never did. Well, they, they did, but they, they restricted it so much that you're only getting one new listing a, a month. Or, and that's a problem now, now that I'm, I'm I'm thinking as I'm talking, if you've set up a search where you've only gotten 10 results because of the tight inventory, maybe you want to broaden it a little bit. Just, just so you have, just so you're touching these people, right? I just thought of that. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and look at my searches because I've noticed the few that I have, I'm not getting as many notifications. But of course not. There's no listings. So maybe I want to broaden it. The only thing I would caution you on if you're going to broaden it tell them you're broadening it so you don't get so they're not thinking i told them not to send me listings over 500 here's a six hundred thousand dollar listing make sure you tell them that okay i'm going to stop talking i've been talking too much okay good to see everybody okay good to see you thank right. you okay. thank you we'll wait right. for the next one